What's up, Cradle fans? We are back for another post Winter Steel video, this time talking about icons. If you haven't read Winter Steel, you can't watch this video. You are grounded from this video. If you started reading Cradle and wanted to see if there are YouTube videos and you found this video, I'm sorry, but you can't watch it. Uncrowned and Winter Steel are prerequisites, otherwise, you will have no idea what I'm talking about. And spoiler warning, we're not two months out from the book launch, so watch this only if you've read the book. Okay, cool. So we're going to get into this now. Uh, I have a lot to talk about, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, the icons of Cradle. I made a video about icons and authority in the past. That was before Winter Steel. I don't remember how wrong I was, but I don't think I was that wrong. Uh, I think I understood what the con what an icon was, being like a concept of a thing, concept of reality, and that you have to manifest one permanently in your spirit to become a sage. Okay, uh, it doesn't quite work like that in the actual books. You manifest an icon by becoming an icon of that thing. So Linden became the end. He became the void. He became the end of all things. And so he manifested the icon and now they're connected. A little bit different. Uh, we're going to get into that more, uh, but you can watch that old video if you want. This video is going to talk about the specifics of icons in Winter Steel and the ramifications of what that could mean for icons, progression, plot development, cool magic stuff going forward. Okay? Cool. So this is what I'm going to cover in this video, roughly. Uh, what is an icon? Kind of already talked about it. Uh, how you manifest one. All the icons we know of, everybody's asking for a comprehensive list. I sort of posted one on Reddit a long time ago, but it wasn't my own post, so you can come here to find the comprehensive list. Then I'm going to talk about the layered icon theory and the layered icon theory and how it pertains to Osriel and his time as a monarch pre ascension. Cool. So let's get into that. So I've got a couple quotes here from the book talking about icons. This is kind of setting the stage for what I'm going to talk about later. Uh, but this is what manifesting an icon means. Okay. So we're going to start at the top. Now, the specific icon you manifest depends not only on the nature of your magic currently, but on the concept that has always been core to your identity, even in childhood. Equally important is some kind of technique to regularly train your willpower for years, an exercise that pushes your focus and concentration ever further and that most people would give up or abandon for easier trails. Moving on again, and then I'm going to talk about all these. An icon, as I'm sure you've picked up, is a symbol of a powerful concept. The more you represent that concept, the better. In your case, you yourself must become a symbol of swordsmanship, not in the eyes of mankind, but by the measure of something deeper. All right. Couple things to talk about here. Humans are complex, okay? You don't represent one concept from the time you're little to the time you become a sage. So everybody has the potential to manifest different icons. You have the potential to manifest more than one icon and I say you as if you're on Cradle, but sacred artists have the potential to manifest multiple icons. It's whether or not they can become a symbol of this concept, to become a symbol of that concept to themselves and to a, a deeper tie to reality. I'm not going to talk about who has manifested multiple icons because that's coming later, but just here. And then I want to talk about how willpower is an important component of that. Each. Wow. I think, the... I think, wow. Unsold just fell. And we're talking about icons. Spooky. Void icon right there, ladies and gentlemen. Spooky. Okay, moving on. I'm not even going to cut that out of the video. That's awesome. All right. So willpower is another important component to exercise your authority you have to use willpower conscious willpower this is a um 
one of the skill sets of the ghost division of the Abaddon, conscious willpower, binding things, bringing them together. Okay. Conscious willpower. I don't want to know. I don't know if I'm making too many connections here, but conscious willpower and you rep being a symbol binds you then to a deeper concept of reality. Willpower is how you are able to exercise your authority over reality and change it, fundamentally change it against the laws of nature. You're using your willpower to exert your authority over reality, depending on whatever icon you have manifested. Okay, we've got that down. So let's talk about the various kinds of icons that we know of, 100% know of, and what they control represent. I'm going to be pretty brief because this could go on forever. I'm going to list them all. We've got the sword icon, the winter icon, which is a very interesting name, the heart icon, the blood icon, the dragon icon, the strength icon, the void icon, and then four unnamed icons that we know are icons because I asked Will, he said yes, but he said that's not their names. But it's a big enough hint that if Sacred Valley has the void icon as their unsold badge, that they, that the other badges they use are actual icons, right? So we've got the, uh, we've got the shield icon, the arrow, which I think might be like the hunter icon, the scepter, which is like royalty um, or like power over other humans or like leadership or something. Uh, where if you're like known as a leader, you can manifest that. And then we've got hammer, which is um, has a lot of symbolism all the way up to the highest levels of magic, which is um, Adriel, the uh, judge, I think, zero, 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 who was never a formal judge because uh, he left before the Eladari Pact was signed. But... He was the, uh, the creator, and his symbol was the hammer of creation. And so most of the, the reason why the, the, the various divisions of the Abaddon are named the way they are is because the founding members came from Cradle. We don't know if Ad Adriel did, but it makes sense that they would make his icon the hammer of creation based off of the fact that the hammer represented creation and creativity in the arts on Cradle. Okay, cool. And then there's some icons that we can guess at. Uh, so the Oracle Sage, or the Sage of a Thousand Eyes, we know that her, she's called the Sage of a Thousand Eyes, not because she's on the path of a thousand eyes, but because of her uh, extreme control over her uh, bloodline ability. We know that Athan is very similar to her in the sense that his revelations, well, his overlord revelation was I see, and it was similar to Claudia's. We know that she's the Oracle Sage. We don't know if the icon she manifested is called the Oracle Icon, because that sounds like it could be wrong. Uh, and we also know that oracles on Cradle are considered people who can look into fate a little bit and see the changes of fate and we know that that's not really Athan's game he's more of a spider like with a literal web in the sense that he is uh, a master of of the present and of awareness which is the domain of the spider division of the abaddon and the all-seeing eye type of observer concept of reality could be the oracle icon and depending on your forte or what you're skilled at, the things that you're granted authority over might be different with that icon. Anyway, there could be a light icon. There could be a shadow icon, although I don't think so. There could be a life icon. There could be a death icon, but I don't really think so. Uh, there are definitely other elemental icons, but guessing at what their names are would be hard because if there's a winter icon that is about ice and freezing then there has to be icons pertaining to other other types of elemental forces very early on will told us that ice and water magic are very different and we'll get to see that later on so ice is apparently it represents the concept of, uh, of freezing of binding of holding of stopping and so it has its own icon represented by a season 
So I really doubt that there's like a summer icon, a spring icon, or a fall icon because those, yeah, those those words don't emit as much of like an elemental feel as winter, the winter icon does. So I'm assuming there's like a fire, water, earth, wind, maybe metal, considering in um, Chinese culture there are five elements, fire, water, earth, wind, and metal. I think that's right. Maybe fire, water, wood, wind, and metal. That might be right. Anyway, uh, so those icons might exist. Who knows? There may be an icon that might be the elemental icon, where it's like an icon that rules over all of those elements. I don't know. I don't know. But the icons we do know of, I'm pretty confident in what they mean, except for the arrow. But I think it's the hunter icon, and I think that Akura Malice that's her icon I'm pretty sure and I we, we, she's known as like a like this warrior princess who grew up on the battlefield and fought for humankind and quelled rebellions and all sorts of stuff using this bow and she's on a pure shadow path well any of us who've played Elder Scrolls you learn how to sneak you get a bow and arrow and you snipe people and you become a, a hunter assassin and you clear dungeons it's like one of the most common tropes that exists so she used an arrow all the way up to Arc Lord, and then she used a bow as tall as a tower or whatever with arrows that were as tall as lighthouses and was battling with them at the highest level. So it makes sense that she's a hunter or manifested that icon instead of like the shadow icon or something, which is like the icon of the unseen. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it exists. Maybe she's got it. Maybe she's got more than one. Who knows? But talking about more than one, let's get into the layered icon theory, okay? I'm of the theoretical opinion that the more icons you're able to manifest, the stronger you become. Why? Because if you're able to layer multiple kinds of authority into your techniques, your techniques are going to be much, much harder to stop against people who are able to fundamentally stop laws of reality. So, if a sage can only attack you with one kind of authority, you might be able to counter it. But if a sage is attacking with two kinds of authority at once, using a ruler technique or a forger technique or something, that's probably much harder to stop because you're fighting two different types of authority. So I think that the more icons you manifest, the stronger you are. However, Before I get into this, I'm going to talk about the people who have multiple icons and the proof that they have multiple icons in the books. We have the Winter Sage, who manifested first the Winter Icon and then the Sword Icon, which makes sense because she's on the path of the Frozen Blade, and uh, she runs the Frozen Blade sect. Then we have North Strider, who has the Dragon Icon, and the Dragon Icon is a key component of making his path uh, more complex. We also know he has the strength icon because he punched Reagan Shen in the face using the authority of the strength icon. We then later saw him manifest a barrier, okay, to stop a city killing weapon of Reagan Shen's. Well, what division of the Abaddon is extremely good at barriers and formations and stuff? The Titans. What concept of the way do they control? The law of protection. What is the most common icon for protection? A shield. So very likely he has the dragon strength and shield icons. But the dragon and strength are the only ones that have been proven. The shield icon is a guesstimate. Um, he also has the power of restoration. And I have no clue which icon grants that. I've been thinking about it long and hard and I have no clue. I'm thinking maybe the shield icon does. Maybe. Um, another important thing before I go into these quotes, just because you've manifested an icon doesn't necessarily mean that all the things that someone else is, is able to control with their authority over with their icon doesn't mean you can do the same stuff. Okay. So if there's another blood sage, that blood sage might not have the same skill set that the blood sage we know of has and vice versa. Okay. So our blood sage is able to say die and 
do a ruler technique with it. And it's super dangerous. Well, another guy, he might be like a healer, okay? So he might not be able to say die and kill people with a with a ruler technique uh, and and his authority, because that he just might have no skill in killing people with authority. He might be able to say heal, and then like their blood aura fixes them, which it might be different than like restore. Who knows? Um, but I'm pretty sure that's true because Osriel is good at everything except for healing. He is the avatar of destruction, but has zero skill in restoration. They're polar opposites, but he's good enough at everything else to be a judge at everything else. Uh, furthermore, Gadrael, the uh, Abaddon of the Titans, or the judge of the Titans, is only good at Titan stuff, at shields, barriers, stuff like that. He has no skill at almost anything else, despite the fact that he has a mantle and a weapon. So, obviously, your your personal skill comes into play with what you're able to do with the authority that an icon grants you. All right, moving on. So, we know that Min Shui has two icons because she says, I manifested the winter icon first. I became a symbol of ice, of cold, of all things that freeze and are frozen. Only later did I also reflect the sword icon, which this is kind of like weird verbiage because Yaren reflected the sword icon. She touched the sword icon, but she didn't manifest it. I think this is, imp I mean, it's implying that she's manifested the sword icon here that Min Shui has, but I digress. Uh, moving on, the dragon was not the only icon that Norstrider had manifested. And then it like stops. It doesn't like imply that the only other one he manifested was strength. It stops and then it moves on. It says he launched a punch and the authority of the strength icon empowered him. Okay. So may, uh, who knows what Northstrider, how many he has. But I think, I think that's why Northstrider is still on the planet. He is attempting to manifest multiple icons to increase his overall strength and skill set. He's trying to accomplish whatever goals he has, but the main thing is he doesn't want to ascend and uh, excuse my French here, but be a basic bitch, like low level Abaddon. He says this verbatim in the text. He doesn't want to ascend and be a low level Abaddon. He wants to be join the ranks of the true world changers, the judges, the super upper level tier. He probably knows that to do that, you need to have a lot of authority, a lot of power, a lot of ability to manipulate reality. That means you need multiple icons so that you have authority over all different parts of reality and that you can merge and layer those things so that your concepts of reality are, are, are stronger, right? We see Serial without the power of the way behind her. She has no access to the way. She's in an iteration fighting Vrosheer and she's still able to do a working, which is like, the big bold yelling at someone and then reality changes around them. That's called a working. She's able to say be gone and completely remove someone from existence without being touched by the way. So this makes me feel that icons and concepts of reality are independent of the way. The way may give you extra power and extra authority but you still have access to that authority if you're not connected to the way, okay? We also don't know if icons exist all over the multiverse. I think they might, they probably do, because they they're, these concepts of reality exist independently of the way. Uh, this also feeds into my theory that you have authority over your magic system, you have individualized authority that you get by representing an icon, I guess. And then you have a higher authority that can be granted to you by like a powerful item or a position, like the mantle of the different um, judges. Those mantles grant them additional authority over their division. Um, so anyway, talking about I um, items that have authority imbued with them, that's a thing. And it, it, we, we see it in uh, even at the Arc Lord level. And I'll show, show it here. So 
um, you can do it with both techniques and items. With um, we see at first where Athan uh, he shoots his uh, king's spear or whatever. It was effectively the same technique it had been, just a lance of pure madra, but in this form it conducted willpower much better. Okay, and then when Yaren is talking about nether claw, its binding was an advanced forger technique filled with the will of the murderer who had left it behind. This is going to be super key when Linden is making items in armor. You can imbue it with willpower. You can imbue it with authority. What do you think the uh, winter steel blades binding does? It creates a domain that binds you and cuts you, both freezing and things that are frozen and things that cut. The sword and the winter icon are both imbued into that technique um, and that binding does both of those things to whoever it affects. It binds them and it cuts them. That's wild. Uh, we also see authority being put into an item when Sasheth Gunaz gives um, Sasheth Gunaz gives his icon or his statue or whatever, his idol uh, to Safara and it has his willpower, his authority, you know, his madra and stuff. Um, and then once again, I'm pretty sure the, uh, what's it called? The something bridge, the moon bridge, that has the authority of Reagan Shen in it. And that's why Yaren's able to teleport all over the world at will. She has an item in her soul that was imbued with the authority over space and so the authority of Reagan Shen. Okay. Cool. All right. Let's talk about Osriel for a second and why I think that North Strider is uh, copying him in a way. And then I'm going to talk about the, the order of icons that you manifest might be a thing. So Osriel is known to be a legend all over Cradle. Okay. Suriel was able to see a whole slew of different deeds of his. He was a legendary soulsmith. He was a legendary warrior, and he was also apparently a legendary scholar, okay? The first time he touched the way, he was filled with rage. This is like a multifaceted person who ended up being a judge level at everything. So I think it's, uh, it's inherent to who he is uh, to gather power with the desire to change things. I believe that his family or his wife or whoever his partner was, was killed and he wasn't able to fix it. Um, and so he went around trying to gather powers in an attempt to become able to stop that from happening, stop his, the people he care about from being killed. Similar to, to Yaren. The tragedy of Osriel, which I've made a video about this, is he became good at everything except the ability to heal. So he can't, he can't just directly heal people. He holds the Phoenix division in the highest regard, but because he had a desire to do something, he went around and changed to what he represented. He became a symbol of all these different things all over Cradle, probably manifesting multiple icons in an attempt to fill a gap in his skill set that he was never able to fill, which is really sad. Uh, this is super big speculation, but he probably is the reason why Hunger Madra exists. And he was probably doing an experiment trying to create like an artificial remnant or something. And because his, um, his greed and his desire and his hunger to uh, get his family back or whatever, he tainted and screwed up and corrupted whatever he was building. And he created Subject 1. I'm guessing he created Subject 1. Uh, which is, again, super depressing. Mad Scientist Osriel. Um, this is getting like way out into left field. So uh, some of it makes sense, and then I'm using what makes sense to like go deep on some, some tinfoil speculation. But so many of you have drawn the conclusion that Subject 1 and Osriel are related. I think he created Subject 1 on accident uh, as a failed experiment uh, that after he was done, he was like, this is stupid. All right subordinates keep studying this 
Let me know if anything changes. I'm leaving some stuff in a tomb. I got to bounce. Uh, maybe I can find out how to fix things at a higher level. He ascends. He's got all these icons. He's super powerful. He has authority over all sorts of stuff. And he eventually builds the scythe, probably using this artificial hunger madra as like a base, uh, paired with his soul smithing skill set and his ability to draw in powers and energies from all over the Willverse to create the scythe. But he was only able to do that because I believe he manifested many icons, merged them together as core of his techniques, and uh, that's how he became so strong. I think that's what uh, North Strider is doing. I think that is why North Strider has not ascended. And I think that's why the uh, the Hound thought it would be hilarious if Yaren tried to kill North Strider and force him to ascend early before he was able to manifest icons on Cradle. Because this is the one little part that adds evidence that icons are uh, Cradle specific, that once you ascend beyond Cradle, you don't get to manifest any more icons. And therefore, uh, you, the range and breadth of your authority is limited, maybe, which creates some interesting potential plot points for our crew uh, as they begin to move into the Sage and Herald domain and start fighting against people that are of that power. Um, so let's chat real quick about how the order of icons that you manifest is important and I think the reason for this I think the whole reason I thought of this is because Athan is still an Arc Lord he's still an Arc Lord he has also been trying very 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 hard not to be the leader not to be the one in charge not to be the king not to be the ruler every once in a while that veneer cracks and his authority as a ruler breaks through he's sitting on authority right now i guarantee you he can break through to sage whenever he wants to all by saying something like i rule or i'm the i'm in charge or whatever i'm a leader he does it in the transcendent ruins whenever he's talking to everybody Lyndon looks upon him as if he's a king then again he does it when he's talking to his uh to Cassius again Lyndon's like he gave off the authority of a king and then it, very quickly he drops back into his like lackadaisical you know messing around grinner type guy and that that authority fades away he's trying to be mysterious and aloof on purpose he tells Lyndon, he's very honest and straightforward with Lyndon and Yaren about how he's planning all these things and how much should he give away? How much should he show? How much of himself should he let people see? He's trying not to manifest the scepter icon first. I don't know why, but it makes me think that the, the order with which you manifest icons is important. I think he might be trying to get the oracle icon first. Uh, which makes me feel like there is a, a tier to the kinds of icons you manifest. There's like your low tier icons. I don't know what that would be. But maybe like the winter icon, for example. Uh, could be like a basic icon. Um, and if you get a basic icon, you might only be able to get other basic icons and merge them. But if you start with a top tier icon, you can merge everything below it into that icon. So like, for example, you could have the bleeding void, the freezing void, the cutting void, the, sh the powerful void, you know, the void dragon's dance, the fiery void. You can have all these different kinds of voids because a void doesn't have any aspects. It's just emptiness. It's the end. It is like a top tier icon, I think, that you can merge a whole slew of stuff with. Again, the oracle icon. I don't know how I'd merge that stuff, but like the, the Oracle sword, you know, the Oracle fire, the all seeing, the all seeing shadow, you know, I don't know. It just feels like something you can merge with a lot. And I think that that might have something to do with the divisions of the Abaddon, like these super high tier types of icon. I don't know. What do y'all think? 
Do you think that uh, multiple icons is an important part of becoming powerful post cradle? Do you think that manifesting multiple icons before you go herald is a smart idea? Maybe Min Shui has such a powerful remnant due to the willpower and authority granted to her by the two icons that it's almost impossible for her to go to Monarch, um, especially with her like unstable emotional state. Maybe Ethan is trying to become a herald so that he can immediately activate his icons and go straight to Monarch. That's, the, that's like a super Ethan thing to do. Oh, I've been sitting on multiple sources of authority. You thought that Fury was, but nope, I was. So now I'm a herald. Just kidding. What do you say? I lead. Boom. He's a monarch, which is the most ironic thing in the world for him to say, I, I'm a leader, and then become a monarch, and then like actually become a leader. All right, we're at a half hour mark again, so I'm going to leave you all with this. Thank you for watching. Tell me your thoughts in the comments. Hit me up on Discord. Uh, it's always a lot of fun to chat with all of you. So thank you for supporting this channel. And uh, I'll see you next time.